So the other day I was on Twitter and somebody was mentioning how he needed like 24 gigabytes of VRAM and a really beefy machine to run any large language model like Mistral even. I responded that wasn't correct and told them about LM Studio. They didn't know about it. So I thought I'd do a little video to go through it. LM Studio allows you to run a language model like Mistral, like um, a number of the other models, Llama, from your machine and really simplifies the process in doing so. And in fact, many people don't know this, but you can run these models even just on CPU. So once you download LM Studio, um, it constantly is, is giving notes about updates, but there is a spot on the side that lets you browse all the different open source large language models. I've seen tweets from LM Studio as well, suggesting they're adding, they're adding image creation as well. So right on the main page, however, is a list of some of the more popular new language models like Mistral 7B Instruct 0.2. And it shows all the different quantized versions of these models and gives a little bit of detail about the level of loss in each of the, the quantized versions. And you can see all of them. Um, LM Studio largely is using these models from Hug and Face. So right within the program here, even you can just download whatever quantized version of whatever open source model you want to use. Now, when I was running it for this demo, it didn't really work very well. I wasn't connecting to Hugging Face for whatever reason. So I took another approach. I just went to Hugging Face and searched for the model there, <clears throat> the same model, Mistral 7 b Instruct, and downloaded it there. And then once it's downloaded, you can just go to the My Files within LM Studio and LM Studio will give you the file structure in which that model needs to be stored. Pretty easy stuff, it took two seconds, and despite it not downloading right from the program, I had it installed, no problem. So once installed, it identified it as like a Minstrel 7B instruct, and I was able to then just go to the chat interface here, load up the model, and this is sped up a little bit. It did take a little bit on this machine, but the model loaded. And like I do with when I'm testing many language models, the first question I asked it was, what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Like any true Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fan would, would ask. And it gave me a pretty good response, right? So again, this is running on a laptop that has a 3050 Ti installed with, I don't know, four gigs of RAM, but I'm not even using the GPU here. I'm just using straight up CPU and you can see even here, it's only taking four and a half gigabytes of RAM. CPU usage is generally even not that high. And it gave me a really good answer. I'd say like on par with chat GPT-4. And I tried a bunch of other things, right? Like I tried asking for some Python code to create a Sudoku puzzle. And the model, the quantized version of, of Mistral 7B even, uh, gave me some legit Python code for sure. And the Python code even worked. Um, it didn't really quote go quite as planned. You're gonna see this in a moment. The code worked like maybe, but or theoretically, I mean, clearly it was trained on some code that generated Python or, or Sudoku boards. But when I ran it, it was like a caught in some sort of infinite loop. So escaped out of that. And I, and I spent a little while like trying to figure this out, even asked uh, Mistral like, hey, can you rewrite this for me? Cause you know, it got caught up in an endless loop. And like most large language models, funnily enough responded like my apologies, right? And it's funny, even ChatGPT4 does this all the time, like apologizes when it writes bad code. And so it gave me some different code with some fancy uh, recursive functions in it. And actually here you even see that it made a mistake with doing like a JavaScript comment instead of a Python comment. So, um, but again, like it didn't work and I spent like a few minutes trying to debug it and for sure, like it got caught up in this this infinite loop and I 
wasn't the purpose of this video, so I just stopped doing it. I was just wanted to test Mistral running on a laptop without any GPU. Um, so tried, you know, another question like, hey, can you play the 1985 Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure game from Infocom with me? And you, you know, you tell me the state of things, and I'll respond with commands. And sure enough, it did. It, it didn't give quite a good, as good a response as something like ChatGPT4, which actually does start at the beginning, which actually uses the exact same, um, exact same prompts and descriptions of where you're at. Put me in some sort of situation where, in this case, I was nearby a Vogon construction site, and but you know it asked me to, to you know here's my inventory and here's the scenario here's the state of the game what do you want to do you know go north and it would put me in that spot so again like running on my laptop a four gig language model that has this very broad capability right and it's not perfect by any means it's not fully up to like chat gpt4 but like how long before we have chat gpt4 type language models just running on our local machines. And I would venture to guess it's going to be like before the end of 2024, 100%. Um, one last test here. I, I tried like, how is it writing at science fiction? And I gave it a scenario, you know, good guy on the run from evil, evil corporation, you know, hooking up with an Android and um, trying to take the corporation down. And, and it gave me a story like, I would say that ChatGPT4 does this as well. It like kind of just throws the whole story into a single chapter and doesn't really write like a novel. Um, the other thing I tried doing is actually just offloading some of the processing to my GPU and L LM Studio makes it really easy to do that. Uh, just tell it how many layers and I'm just starting with 10. I don't know how, how much memory that's taking on my GPU. I noticed it was a little faster, right? Um, especially in processing the questions. And again, like most of this is sped up. Uh, so it's not quite this fast, but uh, it, it did feel a little better. So I asked it like some philosophical questions about consciousness and AI and it gave me some, you know, responses. But like, again, four gigabyte model running on my local machine with like three quarters of the world's knowledge just accessible to me. And that's unbelievable, right? I hear Mistral is even running on iPhones and this is the direction, right? Like let's move away from these massive compute capabilities to run things like ChatGPT4. Not everybody is gonna have a partnership with uh, Microsoft and, and to use like half of Azure to, to run their models. These models, are going to be pushed more to the edge, more to devices, and will become table stakes for virtually all, all devices, 100% guaranteed. So moral of the story, you don't need 24 gigabyte you know, RTX 4090 to run these things. You can probably do it with the laptop or, or device you're watching this video with right now.